for this reason that this bird is in this cage, with this cage. sentences. Um, <laughs> there's no way of doing it in a few sentences. Um, um, okay, I'll, I'll just go for it and, and then I'll stop myself. So, so, so um, one of the problems with free will is you, you, the, basically within philosophy the question is that the oppositions usually are free will versus determinism. So determinism is the view that you know, the laws of science govern everything, and if the laws of science govern everything, what room is there for? Freedom. And uh, usually the way the, 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 the argument then goes is, you know, perhaps you know, somewhere within the laws of physics there's a bit of manoeuvre. That's one way that people go with it. So, you know, sometimes maybe, you know, if something is probabilistic but not completely determinist, or maybe if something is random, uh, you know, that would kind of save it. But of course it doesn't, because randomness doesn't get us any closer to free will than, than, than determinism does. And so the, 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 the question that we really have to address in order to save what we want to save is the free will that we actually experience ourselves to have. Now the very first point that has to be made about that is that if you actually examine, if I examine my own experience, my own feeling of, you know, the extent to which I'm free or not free, then for a start, I only feel a very constrained form of free will. So I never felt that I could fly, for example. More seriously, I feel in a social situation that the range of options I have are quite constrained. There are all sorts of things, for example, in this social situation that I simply wouldn't do. I wouldn't feel free to do them because you would regard them as deeply inappropriate. <laughs> and that applies across the board. <laughs> now, so the kind of freedom that I would want to defend is a kind of constrained free will. That's the only freedom I feel I've got. Yeah. And then, you know, I, I should say, uh, in case you're really interested in any of this, you can put in Velmans and and free will into Google and you'll come up with a paper, yeah? <laughs> but to try and give you a kind of quick sense of, of where I'd be coming from with that is that there is, a, there is a position in philosophy known as compatibilism, which says that if we just think about ourselves as creatures in the right sort of way, then we can see how we could be those sorts of creatures and still manifest the kind of free will we feel we've got. And, and the way that goes is that, that actually the, any, any cognitive psychologist's description of us, even from a third person perspective, would look nothing like the laws of physics. It would be something like a very complex system which performs very interesting forms of human information processing. So when a, a psychologist, a scientist, tries to work out how do we make decisions, he would have to build into his model, first of all, 
a part of us that understands the world in which we're operating, a part of us that has a representation of who we are, a part of us that has goals and aims, a part of us that has strategies for fulfilling our goals, and so on and so on. And it would also have to be a kind of system that's able to learn from experience. And so you, you, this is what psychologists do. They try and build up a kind of internal model of us as, as in, in the form of the complexity that we are. And if you build up an appropriately complex model of us, then it would have to be a model that has the degrees of freedom to make decisions according to our own values and goals, given the strategies and options available to us, that make us feel we've got a degree of freedom in making a choice in, in the situations that we do. And that, that then gets you into a kind of com compatibilism. But, but, you know, I'm now going to throw a rock in this pond that, that, that the feeling of freedom that we have when we make the choice is not itself responsible for the choice. So, when I feel that I have a choice and I feel I'm making it, let's say I now feel I could do that. I'm going to wave at you. Yeah? But the decision to do that, as opposed to kind of stand up and do that, you know, which just came as a spontaneous thought. All came from my pre-conscious being. And so the title of the paper that I was referring you to is called Pre-Conscious Free Will. Which sounds like it couldn't be possible. <laughs> but is arguably the truth. And so if you like, what that does for me is to say, actually what I think of as myself normally as just the conscious bit of me is just the conscious tip of, of the whole structure that I really am, most of which is below the waterline. And, and much of where I'm coming from is coming from the depth, so to speak, including you know, the kind of deeper choices that I make and exercise and, and judgments and so on. It's a little bit like maybe you're in a difficult situation and, and, and you don't know what to do and you ask yourself a question, well, what am I going to do in this circumstance? And an answer arises from my own depth, if you like. And that's what I do. But, 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 but <laughs> Jay has really been waiting to, to come in on this. Yeah. Do it. Slightly shorter answer. <laughs> <laughs> See, what you have done is, is uh, uh, the panel is we have stirred up the spirit here for sure. One gentleman is saying, "Why can't I become Superman?" And the other gentleman says, "Mr. Lakani, do we have free will or are we shackled? Because everything we do, everything we think, seems to be working like cogwheels, machine." fashioned by nature and nurture combined. Is there no escape? First of all, let me just philosophically say the word free will itself is contradictory. Because when you say free will, will is never free, it's always somebody's will. It's already tied up with an individual. So it's a contradiction in terms, right from start. But let me give the fun, fun part. Do you know what you're asking? If at all you felt, you felt even for a moment that you did not have free will, you were a machine, you will have no love for life whatsoever. There is something within us standing up telling us we are not bound, we are not bound by nature and nurture. And that is a sign of free will. So free will is a sign of the spirit. Just as the gentleman saying, why can't I fly, why can't I? It's the same thing. The thing that is standing up, 
saying that I'm not bound, I'm not bound. That is the sign of the spirit. That is free will. Thank you. One more question, I think it's the last question. <coughs> Thank you very much for each of your presentations. I think it was very interesting and very uh, mind-opening. Um, my question, I guess, is more general. I think each of you mentioned it, but I think more tilted towards Mr. Lakani's sort of presentation. And it's essentially um, touching on the fact of how and, I guess, to what extent um, consciousness um, resists um, scientific explanation. And I was just wondering if each of you could sort of, you know, sort of do some of that. What was the question? Well, scientifically, what is the consciousness? Yeah, I'm just not quite sure what the question is. Essentially, I think each of you sort of touched on this. It was basically the whole thing about knowing how much and to what extent consciousness resists the scientific explanations. Ah, right. It wants a bit of a stake in the ground. To what extent does it resist scientific explanation? Um, it depends on what you mean by a scientific explanation. So, so one problem that is common at the moment is that scientific explanation in terms of... Uh, is, is, is taken at the moment by many to be understandable within certain currently popular scientific <coughs> paradigms. Whereas the truth is that, that, that science has always shifted paradigms as, as you know, it's progressed. So at the moment, a lot of people confuse scientific explanation with a materialist reductionist explanation. Whereas as Jay, for instance, was telling us, ironically, the founders of quantum mechanics were by no means materialist reductionists, quite the opposite. And so, um, if you mean, uh, could we ever envisage a kind of confluence between, if you like, a more advanced scientific understanding and the kind of felt experience of consciousness and the potentialities of consciousness, then I would certainly be uh, optimistic about that being the case. And it was also, for instance, very much Aurobindo's view that uh, in the end the kind of exercise of, of rationality and this kind of open-ended exploration of the nature of things, which epitomizes the best of science. I'm not talking about any particular theory which is currently regarded as the, the last word, I see no reason why, in the end, we will come to a more human understanding, which is also, if you like, <coughs> hard-edged and clear in, in, in the, the scientific sort of sense. I guess in answer to your question, I want to, I want to challenge your perception of what a scientist is because I think that you know when we look back in terms of you know the pioneers in science that they were people who went out and they wanted to experience and experiment and understand their world now there's no difference in that definition from from someone who follows a mystic tradition and so I think in reality what will happen is the boundaries that we construct between scientific insight and mystical insight will dissolve. So in answer to your question, will science solve the, the, the elusive question of consciousness? No, probably not. But will a level of understanding that stems from scientific and mystical insights and exploration of the world, then yes, I think we will. Thank you for coming. Uh, thank you all for coming. And if you need, uh, if you need your email, send me email to the presentation hall. I will inform you of the next presentation we'll do in this two, three months in this series. Thank you very much for coming. And thank you for coming. Thank you. 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 Th